In this video, I'm going to show you how I would draw Link from The Legend of Zelda, this time in a more interesting action pose. As reference, I've got The Legend of Zelda Art and Artifacts book. For this video, we'll go with the old school classic Link design. As is normally the case on the channel, my goal is to combine drawing fun things like this with solid drawing foundational concepts that you might find in a book such as Andrew Loomis's figure drawing for all it's worth. This way I can show you how I would use traditional constructive anatomy techniques while drawing something that I actually find enjoyable and hopefully is more interesting to look at than boring blocky people. This is pretty much how I learned to do this and this is what I do every day as a professional comic book artist. There's a number of really good things you can learn from the classic link design. It's a little bit easier to draw and thus a better example of how to pose a character from a slightly more dynamic angle, but it's also a really good way for you to discover good design and understand what makes these types of characters tick. This is a classic example of shape design and color, internal external silhouette that has lasted the test of time and it's something where we can see even all these years later that a character is still Link because they still have some of that classic look and feel. So anyway, we'll talk a little bit about the design but this is mostly going to be about drawing. This should be a fun one so let's jump in and get started. All right, welcome to The Drawing Codex. My name is Tim McBurney. I've been a professional working artist for over 20 years. And on this channel, we're all about drawing cool stuff from our imagination, embracing the challenge of drawing and mastering the craft of line and color illustration. As I said, I am a professional comic book artist and the line and color style is how I create all of my illustrations, concept art, comic books, etc. If you'd like to learn more about how I do what I do in the line and color style, you can check out my free quick start guide. It's aimed to get you up and running quickly in Photoshop, developing your own simple, reliable line and color process. You get access to all of the brushes, PSDs that are you know, used in the quick start guide, it's free. The link will be in the description. For this video, however, we're just gonna be doing a simple pencil sketch because I think that is often the foundation of what makes all drawing and all art good or bad is our understanding and our ability to do the basic drawing. It's classically been said that all painting problems are drawing problems, so this really is where it all starts. So even though this one is not gonna be dealing with color, it really is the foundation of all that is important when it comes to making good art. Anyway, let's jump over to the drawing table and get started. All right, here we are at the drawing table. Now, before we get stuck into the actual demo, I did just want to quickly talk about the design here. So as I said, we're going to be going with the classic old school link design or some derivation of it. It's really important to understand how good some of these simpler designs that are based around much simpler technical requirements are. And I think it's a good example of how important it is to appreciate the good things that can happen when it comes to technical limitation is sometimes when we have more polygons, more detail, more budget, we don't necessarily get better designs. And often, if you look at modern video games, from my opinion, I think often it is, you know, some of the ones that are based off old designs that have a little bit more visual impact. So again, just something that's worth sort of thinking about, um, meditating on is, is just how, you know, nice this old design is. Uh, very, very simple, but, you know, great sort of combination of colors. And more importantly, again, when you're looking at these things, if you're looking to design your own characters or be a concept designer, just appreciate that, again, you know, you can really tell that it is the same character even though you know the hairstyle changes a little bit, the costume, the style of the entire game is modified, right? Often we see young Link, um, you know, we see much more sort of stylized Link, and all of these cases basically still feel like the same character, and that's really important. It's because there is a good underlying iconic design there that will hold things through. And if you have a good design like that, again, you can make it a little bit darker, a little bit lighter, you can change things. But again, the basic sort of, you know, childhood, sort of childish stoic character of, of Link uh, still comes through, right? 
even when we have you know the really fun cartoony version again it still has that fun look so always important to understand and appreciate these things um i think uh, again you know they'll get a little bit com more complicated with some of the designs in the in the later games and then they'll always come back to something that's a little bit more simple and iconic and uh, again it's always good to practice understanding what makes these designs work and also if you are looking to learn to draw sometimes simpler designs like this can be a much better way to understand the fundamentals because we can learn how to draw them better and that gives you a good understanding of um, again like what's going to be going wrong with the actual drawing because you already understand how to draw the actual costume itself and all of the little details so well worth you know if you do have a favorite character an OC of yours or some kind of you know character that's you like from a fan perspective really you know study the costume learn how to draw it and then look at posing and uh, yeah how we pose the character is what i'm going to look at first because i want to do something a little bit different here i want to give him more of an action pose and i want to make sure that i include the thumbnailing for that little sort of thumbnail sketch as well so let's uh, get started with that just quickly tools for today are a matte blackwing pencil i'm going to be using some kneadable eraser to take back graphite paper that i'm drawing on is some strathmore drawing smooth surface 400 series um, but again, you know, it's quite good for doing these types of drawings on. I'm going to be using this as reference and also it's important to understand that I have a bunch of other videos on the channel really sort of delving into things that you would find in Andrew Loomis's books, either drawing the head and hands or figure drawing for all it's worth. I'm not going to go over them in detail here and what I recommend is I'll have a few links in the description where you can go check out the channel and uh, you know you can sort of understand how those things are functioning here because um, I think if I go over it too much the the demo will just drag on a little bit it'll, it'll go for uh, you know longer than it needs to so this really is a matter of understanding how we might uh, sort of employ those ideas now before we start what I always like to do is think about some thumbnailing and what I'm doing here is very similar to what you would find in those Loomis books I am trying to understand what makes the character tick and in that case right the character from a proportional standpoint is a little bit more boyish so i've got my basic skeletal structure here he's got again some hair and again i'm not not exactly sure which uh, you know specific version but just the the old school the general sort of old school link look Right, so there's a couple of things that we need to include when we're doing this in order to get the drawing feeling right when we're doing this initial set of sketches. Because some of these shapes will affect the way that things look. Especially if we're looking at doing, you know, some of these poses here like you can see where we kind of want to make sure that we can see the eyes, right? So there's probably a couple of things you can learn here about how these designs function. For instance, he has a giant lop of hair that is conveniently on one side of his face. This is one of those things where when, when you go and design a character, it, it can be tricky because we sort of imagine like, well, no, no, his hair's on this side of his face. Uh, typically, people just cheat when they're doing these things um, as drawings in 3D. Um, you have to design it and think about it differently. But again, just look at how it's done and understand that, that the hair and all these other elements are things that we're going to have to work towards. So let's play around with putting the shield there. All right, so we're going to have a shield of some kind and a sword of some kind. And uh, yeah, he seems to be left-handed for the most part which is which is interesting unless the drawings have been flipped Boom. right so that's the kind of basic little mannequin block in that we're going to be working with important to understand that again the feet do become kind of chunky and that'll really pay a play a big role in how the overall thing looks as well so if I'm thinking about, okay, he needs an action pose. 
one of the most important things that you kind of see with an action pose is exactly what we've got going on with this amazing drawing here, which is where we have a lot of rotational difference between the torso and the pelvis. So basically, you can see that it just feels as if someone is swinging a bat. We can get the sense that there's kinetic energy built up because the torso is facing one way, right? The rib cage is facing another way, but the legs are facing a different way, right? The pelvis is pointing a different way. And you can really get that feeling of um, dynamic energy there. Now, we don't necessarily need to do any of that. I'm not after like an action action pose, just something that is a little bit more dynamic. And typically what I do, I'm gonna show you how I would do this how I would do it, not necessarily how one should do it. But normally the way that I'm going to do it is just try and think about a bit more of a dynamic pose here. And, and a big part of what I, what I want to try and have is just an interesting angle. This is also good because often angles are a little bit harder to draw. So it's a good thing to kind of demo. So I'm thinking maybe we have his torso looking this way, his head is looking this way, right? We've got the shield like this. And what I want to make sure is that, right, our eye level is right down here. So we're looking up at him. We've got a sword here. And have one leg here. So this is a fairly sort of standard pose that I would use, but we always have to consider the pose based on what works for the characters, things that they're holding, their costume, all of their little bits and pieces, the paraphernalia that, that we include as part of the costume. So I'm going to try and basically add some dimensionality. Now again, what's the character standing on? Don't know, maybe some logs or something like that. Again, I normally just imagine, right, that Link is in a forest scene or something like this. So we're going to have a hand here. To make sure we put at least one foot in here so I'm not completely just avoiding drawing feet. So this is kind of how I would think about it. And normally if I'm playing around, I'm, I'm going to think about, well, okay, let, let's see how the shapes in that will play out. He's got his little tunic style skirt. And we've got... these. He's got the hair, ears, right, shield, sword, and yeah, I don't know. In, in this one, he doesn't have a, um, doesn't have a scabbard there, but look, I, I would probably put one in. We could also try to put one on the back, but and that changes all of the little dynamic things we need to draw. So, again, that's one idea. Um, what else could we try? We could try something that's way more dynamic, right? I mean, we, we could do it from from below so that it is like we're, we're kind of looking up at them. Again, similar to some of these poses. Same thing. Think about what we what we want to do with with the arms. Drawing. Boom. So I'm drawing the torso here, and then I'm drawing the pelvis back here. Knee. All right. Let's have this one. This leg going back.
then again, many, many different ways we could maybe put the shield here somewhere. Might be an interesting way to frame the face. This is all I'll do. I'll just play around right, with different ideas. Which ones are working? Right, which ones are not? And always trying to balance in, in most cases, it's like, yes, dynamics. Yes, dynamics are important, but mostly what I'm trying to do is, is avoid bad tangents so that we don't get any really awkward little areas where things overlap in a, in a, in an awkward way. All right. So again, he could be right in more of like a dynamic pose like this. Again, not exactly sure what is underneath there, but Right, could do something like that. And I just keep going, right? We keep keep thinking about like, okay, like what's what's a good dynamic dynamic pose, right? And uh, you know, if you mess some of these up, right, like doesn't matter. Think about right, like maybe he's jumping. Right, oh, drew that over there. All right, so we sort of got maybe arms out like this. Got the shield. Oh, oh. What's happening with the sword? Don't know. Often what we can do, you know, if you're trying to think about where to put something is, you know, we, we can put the sword somewhere first, right? And just kind of say like, look, let's try and sort of put it here, right? And then, well, where's his hand? And once his hand is there, then I can kind of figure out like, look, how How's he going to grab it? Right. In this case, we'd have a little bit of foreshortening. Right. We could again. You can try all sorts of things. Just mess around. If these things don't turn out well, that's fine. Just forget about it. Right. Like, who cares? And uh, it would, in most cases, like if we if we're trying to draw some sort of dynamic pose, a lot of the dynamics will come from adding extra things to the background, right? To try and make it more of an illustration. You can see here, again, they've really had to try and focus on these dynamic shapes to make the character feel dynamic. Um, but if you're trying to sort of have something specific happen in a scene, often it is a matter of, you know, putting some other things in there, right? But uh, yeah, you know, maybe this would be Something that's kind of fun, right? Sort of got him jumping down from, I'm imagining a branch or something. So we can have a tree in the background. You know, something like that. How would we frame it? Uh, probably frame it a little bit higher, right? So imagine that's going to come up there. Boom. Yeah, you know, something like that. So yeah, maybe that might be a like an interesting sort of one to do. Again, you know, let me know in the comments if you, you know, think I should do a you know another follow up and we'll do some more sketches or anything like that. Again, you know, like the the reason I often don't include too many of these in there. 
um, and I just kind of, you know, do this beforehand is, you know, this can take any amount of time, you know, I, I might really get stuck on this and go off on some tangent and I get creative and I feel like, oh man, what about this? What about this? What about this? It can be really fun to do these. Uh, when I'm doing a demo like this, I'm trying to be a little bit more focused. So there's a little bit of a dissonance between doing this type of drawing and, and demo drawing because we just sort of go off on these different tangents. Uh, whereas I'm, I'm, this particular video is more about drawing demo. But uh, yeah, let's give this a go. See if we can make this still feel dynamic and see if we can think about the pose with this link jumping down from some kind of height. First step is to just transfer this general idea to the page that we actually want to draw on. Now, you could also spend a bit of time doing modifications of the same pose, making it more exaggerated, whatever you want. What I'm trying to do here again is a mix of drawing lesson with trying to draw a picture that is a little bit exciting, you know, is a little bit cool. But what I don't want to try and do too much of is push the foreshortening, try and really, you know, amp up the, the drawing too much. And the reason for that is just because I feel like this is a good intermediary step if we're trying to draw action poses or just some pose in general. Start with something like this, where the character is not fully foreshortened, there's not a crazy amount of exaggeration on the pose, but they are moving, right? We're articulating the, the figure beyond that standard pose that is just going to be, you know, look, the character's just sitting there doing nothing. So we've got some perspective lines going here one could say a grid of sorts and then we're going to have a tree in the background something like that is the idea so i want to make sure that again this pelvis here is not necessarily on a different line to the shoulders etc Right, the shoulder's going to be forward a little bit. Got something, something like this. So still with our stick figure, still with our Loomis concept. Got our pelvis. Now, as I said earlier, if these ideas here are a little bit alien to you, there's plenty of other videos you can check out after to either refresh these concepts or learn some of these ideas from the ground up. And that is just starting with a, a skeleton slash mannequin figure. So I want this be twisted a little bit. This leg's coming down here. And the best way to think about this, because what we're going to be trying to do after we've placed on the basic stick figure, what we're going to do then is think about where all of these major forms are going. And this is where we start to mix in both the concepts of the mannequin that we learned from Loomis and also concepts of construction drawing. So the goal is going to be to take the stick figure and add secondary form. And to do that, it's important to first have a good understanding of where the space is and to draw that skeleton and the proportion of the skeleton there and understand the, the lines of the sketch that we kind of have here. So with this, OK, 
Again, this is coming out, I think. The idea is I want this pelvis to be a little bit forward so we can get more compression. If we look from the side, right, this is what I'm after. Got the head is facing down there. And I want right I want these limbs to be going like that and I want more of that jelly bean shape just a little bit more compression there maybe not quite as much as that but that is the general idea all right so this one is going to go out it's a little bit foreshortened already and it's going to go down here and we're going to have the foot coming here so we get potentially some bad tangents around here so let's see how we deal with those and i'm going to have remember links hat thing so I'll just sort of play around with it a little bit and some point I'll have to go in and true everything up really figure out what's happening there so we can see with this knee it's really it's really foreshortened quite a bit it's coming at us so if you were to look at that from above right, this is the same thing but looking down we have a torso we have a head above the torso got the pelvis here right so this leg is kind of coming sorry right this leg is coming down so if we were to look at it from above again let's put in the shoulders because they're going to be going out like this something like that and again there's a sword and maybe a shield so this leg is just going down and then it's going back again hard to understand with some of these diagrams but this is often what makes a difference this one i feel is going out a little bit and then just down so it's sort of coming at us so that means because we're looking at it from around here we see it more front on so that's something I'm consciously trying to inject. One of the things that's good to try and do if we are tackling this type of drawing is to just make sure that we're not getting two contrasting things happen. Firstly, because we're looking up at this, the feet and the lower torso are actually going to be a little bit bigger. But because I'm looking at this from my angle, I'm going to tend to draw, if I don't sit the drawing up and actually check the proportion this way and get a good angle on it, what I'm going to tend to do is make the head bigger because it's further away from me than the feet. So this is something we need to pay attention to and I'm just going to make sure that I really push that idea, make these feet a little bit bigger and just think about where I'm going to be seeing that from see so we're going to get weird tangents down here but that's all right so I kind of just want this this line here. 
and I'm not really worrying about Link's costume as you can see right now. Mostly what I'm concerned with is the typical anatomy. Okay, let's see if we can get some very simple facial structure in there to begin with. Got my nose, mouth, eyes, forehead, cheekbones, neck, and mostly what I want to check there is are these things in the right spot? Center line. Next we've got the ears. Now, again, depending on how big you want to make them, we could make them a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. I think often that depends which version of the game we are looking at. And also remember, we're going to deal with the head structure here, but we want to make sure that it's clear that the character is going down. So I'm going to make this front fringe go up and in a similar way. All right, we'll have the, the side sideburn style bangs on the side going down. And I think there's a bit of other hair there that will I forget, we'll check back with the design, but that's kind of me roughing in, like, look, remember what's going to happen here. So, you know, I haven't put in any of the eyes, but I'm going to rough in the, the generalized space there so we can just start to feel that. All right. So we're going to be thinking about cylinders. That's the next thing. We've got some of the proportion right, but we don't have a lot of the structure and form. So let's look at how we do that, because this is a big part of drawing from different angles. Now, if I look at this arm over here, this arm is kind of heading away from us, all right? So we, we can think about the concept of, are we going to or towards us or away from us? A toilet roll or cylindrical object that's coming towards us is, is one where, again, you know, it's physically coming towards us, right? It's almost like someone's giving it to us over here. This is where we are. Right, they're sort of pointing it towards us. If it's going away from us, it's going in a different direction. So this cylinder here is going away from us. Right, and this one here is coming towards us, or at least that's how I view it. And this one here is going down. And that's what I'm thinking about. Now, does it help to actually draw it as a cylinder first? Not really, right? It's mostly a matter of you, in your mind, understanding what's happening with it. That's the key. Not necessarily drawing the cylinder, but making sure that you understand what direction this thing is going in because that will allow you to draw the secondary muscle, the forms, to understand the shading, all of that stuff. If there's clothing involved, that will help you. Same with the torso. Right, understanding where we're viewing it from. Right, Link has a belt here. Where do we view that from? Also got to remember, right, Link has some clothes here and they're going to be going up and 
and similarly with the sort of tunic he's got whatever we call that bit of sort of medieval clothing gonna have a belt there somewhere again we'll check some of these costume details I'm just going off memory here and where did we have this sword again you can see here we had this sword about here so let's put it in there now thinking about where this cylinder is allows me to think about where the blocky form of the hand is so we can think about the basics of that I've got a cylinder going here as it ends the form that's going to help me the most is just to consider the right, this bit of the hand and just a little block will do typically and then the rest of it is Right, understanding the thumb and the other fingers. But just getting that to feel kind of right is a huge deal. So here we've got the sword, maybe the master sword, maybe not. We will see. And because it's a little bit more of a cartoony style, we can certainly, you know, make his hands a little bit bigger, etc. And here, so looking again at the, the diagonals, right, we've got the character kind of falling this way. Boom some trees behind and going to line up I have to look again at the reference for where exactly the the shield lines up I would imagine it's going to be somewhere here but again I'll have a look we can just rough it in All right. Boom. Okay. So let's do a quick anatomy pass after we've done this. And then we'll sort of start to look at some of those costume details. So I'm going to put in and think about where some of these muscles and other elements are going to insert. Right, we're going to have our deltoid muscles. We're going to have our pectoral muscles. Obviously got bicep here. This hand probably actually needs to come down a little bit. All right, pectoral. Got some lats coming there. Got a bicep here. Tricep. Elbow. I have our arm muscles over here. And again, just trying to keep all of those structures having that extra solidarity based on where we're viewing them from. Okay, so we're, we're sort of getting there. Again, the goal here is not necessarily to draw like 
again, the best fan, uh, the best, um, you know, most aggressive, awesome pose, just to try and try and learn to and, and demonstrate drawing principles. And uh, yeah, that often means, you know, we do more drawing through. Things look a little bit sketchier, but that's all right. Okay, so again, I feel like we're, we're starting to get to a point where a lot of this stuff is going to be going to be okay from a block-in phase. Let's get this heel. Ball of the foot here. See if we can connect these up. Now this is foreshortened. We're really looking down at this. Boom. But yeah, apart from that, I think we now need to, yeah, maybe we can have this one have a scabbard on his back. Yeah, let's see if we can check some of that reference and put in the rest of the details. All right, here we are. Got the reference back. Just sharpening this pencil. That will do. And yeah, I think in some of them he has the he has pants on. In this in this one he sort of doesn't have pants on. So again, it raises some questions as about to as about like what his what his underwear situation is, but yeah, we'll we'll see we'll see how we go with that. Should have thought of that. I still think it's like a still think it's a cool idea, super old school fantasy, but. All right, so we've got yeah, just just a, just below the knee, basically. If we think about here's the knee, and we've got these big old school fantasy boot things, and I think importantly, there's always quite a bit of bulk on. on the boots, right? I think that's like part of the part of the visual design. So I've got knee. Yeah, again, let me know in the comments, like does he what kind of underwear does Link have? How does that work? Um so yeah, we can think about how to maybe optimize the shapes there. Just kind of hide that stuff a little bit. sense from a cloth perspective right it's kind of going to be billowing up and we've got the belt let's make it that chunky belt buckle so in terms of the belt buckle all I'm thinking about is just similar to the hands we have a box that's very thin and I'm cutting bits out of it all right, and you can see that's how it's kind of represented. We don't have a lot of uh, sort of secondary form on that even. It's very simple. Got the belt. And then here. You can see that. Right, we've got some got 
got some cool pop out shapes here on the tunic and again similar to the boots right this is just good solid shape design right we're just creating some some good interesting shapes that allow us to have good silhouette and that becomes part of the design and it looks like we've got Pretty simple design here. Got one, two, one, two. Little things there. Boom. Okay, so you can see again I'm being very very simplistic with the way that I'm the way that I'm rendering these. Now on this one it looks like he's got a very sort of skin tight set of clothing on top so again exactly how you represent all of these creases and things is very style dependent but again I'm trying to make it feel as if a lot of these areas are pretty are pretty tight. Maybe that is going to give us too much of a silhouette. Maybe just a little bit is enough. But other than that, I'm going to treat it as if similar to the way they've done it here. That yeah, it's kind of just a skin tight thing. Same thing here. Got cloth bunching up a little bit so being very mechanical with it but that is that is a really good way to get the basics happening and again we could have here Right, just a bit of stretch crease there. Again, same thing here. Still have a lot of that musculature. So with this style of drawing, the constructive anatomy style of drawing, again, what we're going to get is some very construction style drawings at this phase. But if you were to just refine this a little more, Another cylinder here. If you were to refine this more, what you would get is, you know, uh, either a more refined version of this drawing, or what you might get is, well, that, that thing's got to go back a bit. Um, just something where you can, you know, do finished lines on top of it, and, and that'll be fine. So either just refine the drawing. Again, it might still be a little bit sketchy, but not too bad. Yeah, he's, he's got this kind of shape here. And these ones seem to be a little bit more flowy. It's obviously not going to start there. It's going to start above, above the ear for the most part. And again, on this one, he's still got. It's interesting how all everyone does these these elf ears differently. This one, he's got those ears like that. So yeah, this means that we. get quite a bit of mass on top of the head there. And 
this. I'm kind of running out of room. Also, good to add plenty of structure to this. Oh, always help us make it feel very dynamic and flowy if we do that. All right, where's he hold this uh, this shield? Yeah, so we can see here. Well, holding the shield with this hand, we have one strap here and another strap here. That's connecting here, but we want it to be. Oh, I guess it's got to be in line with this, doesn't it? Don't, don't, and then let's raise this. Right. Lines coming here. So we can see the shield kind of comes back. Yeah, to like the elbow. So shield is sort of over here. Oh, line down here. So this is super awkward for me to draw in here. I'm like can't see it that well so you yeah, often you know you kind of see I'm, I'm making very rough marks my, my goal here is to just try and make sure I get things accurate in terms of putting it there right so the, the drawing is not accurate in terms of nice clean line but I am trying to make sure that it really really sort of fits and takes up the right amount of space Right, got a hand here. Thumb. Right, top of the thumb. One, two, three, four. Then we're going to have this strap come down. Let's transfer that up there. I'm trying to make sure again we use the same same line so all of these little bits and pieces can really make the drawing feel way less organized if we kind of get them wrong right like if i if i don't line up these straps if that doesn't line up with this so there's a lot of really sort of basic stuff when i'm drawing these kind of details but in most cases if we if we sort of get it all right then it's done and uh, again, I can't really sort of see it from the right angle, but hopefully that's sort of the idea. Again, I don't know whether we'll get a time to do another pass on this. My goal is not to make a super finished illustration, just to kind of show this initial phase. All right, so I feel like maybe this, this leg is kind of working okay. This one looks a little bit chunky. All right. And yeah, might be suffering from me, my perspective of it as well. But yeah, let's see how we go. Here we've got foreshortening. down looking at the heel going over here looking at the ball of the foot let's make sure we put this sword a little bit right see if we can get it going out a bit Boom. Still have center. So again, also hard for me to tell. Like, is this hitting all the marks from the angle I'm using? Oh. 
sharpen this pencil again, I reckon. So, yeah, I do feel like these legs could feel chunkier and that that would really help the whole look of the character because it does seem like it is really important that to his kind of youthful look that these are bigger. So again, let's try and just draw the same thing, but give it a bit more sort of mass, right? Just increase the size of all of these bits and pieces a bit. And these boots are really kind of a little bit formless, right? So yeah, I think this comes out here. See how we go. Yeah, I still feel like still feel like this needs to be bigger. Let's have another go. So this is a yeah, sort of where you gotta make make decisions, right? Like how we've got this weird tangent here. And if we look at our oh, our thumbnail, you can kind of see what I was doing over here was making this go here a little bit more. Whereas this leg is definitely coming out. So let's just see if we can try that because I feel like the sword is sort of working okay. I think that's sort of doing its, doing its job. But yeah, not entirely convinced about these shoes. And, and what I kind of want to do is try and make sure that maybe we see the bottom of the heel, right? Because even though, even though from like my, even though from my view of it, his leg is down. So we, we don't necessarily, you know, we don't necessarily need to see the foreshortening. I do think it would be cool if we could get that happening. So if we do a bit of this, we can really get that stuff happening more. And this might give us, we, we're leaning into the visual iconography that we need to make it feel as if the character is jumping down. Although we are gonna be getting some bad tangents. And a lot of that is just let's make these let's make this foot a little bit bigger. All right, then we've got this one. And this leg can go down here a little bit more, I think. Again, a bit of a messy bit of a messy drawing. And again, what I might do again, just for clarity is try and pull back on the, the tuning coming down so much might not necessarily be helping us the most. All right. So again, from my angle, it feels like this foot is now way too big. Because um, again, I'm not sort of over it. But if I look elsewhere, I can kind of get a, you know, if I, if I look over the top of the drawing, then it feels like this foot is in a much better spot. And again, I'll clean this up in a minute. So this one, we're looking down out still. 
here we got heel of the foot Let's think about what the what the what that foot would what the two bits of the shoe would look like again there's a million ways you could sort of draw this Bom. 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 yeah so again i feel like that's kind of feels a little bit better it's coming on over here. This way we can maybe pop some of these other forms a little bit more. Work on the shape design of the shoulders. But yeah, let's uh let's erase this out, see if we can get this happening. Seems like some of these boots are they're much more maybe soft than what I'm drawing, right? But anyway. This is probably a better thing to demo, right? Like really drawing the underside of the shoe here and then you know above it here. So we're getting major bad tangent. But it, it kind of makes, you know, a lot of that feel as if it is one shape, which I don't think is necessarily a bad thing. Now it feels like we should see some of that leg over there. And that maybe... Maybe this knee is going to start up a little bit, a little bit taller, and subsequently we can move this up here a little bit. Boom, boom. Yeah, that looks a little bit. See if we can work on the shape language of this. Again, here's a little sort of tunic skirt thing. Again, thinking about shape language. Going to shade it in with the directionality of the fall. And I would sort of say probably anything else that needs to be right, sort of shaded in, I would do similar. And yeah, I think I think we've sort of tackled a lot of the big drawing problems, right? Um, I think if we look at look, some of these drawings have him with a scabbard on his side, and some do not. So it's going to kind of draw. Gonna sort of draw one here. Again, that's like terrible from a shape design tangent point of view. Maybe just sort of leave it there. And this is a good example of how, again, you know, the more we think about um, like like sort of adding complexity to drawing, right? The, the more that we need to manage. So he's got this sort of nose, right? Again, adding a little bit of my kind of style, right? Like how I would stylize Link. It's 
add some eyes. A little bit of a smile. go and again there's a lot of like junk around the eyes that often really stops them feeling fun so if I just kind of really clean it out make it feel a little bit cleaner I think that might help but yeah getting there right and again you know we should have got this costume here we could keep going we could keep playing around with it and yeah if we were to do the the background again it's a matter of thinking about the same thing right where are all these different forms going shade with the with the speed but yeah, I think we're probably out of time in terms of adding background or adding, you know, too much extra stuff to this. Just want to add a little bit of momentum there. And, uh, you know, you could add speed lines, add whatever you want to, to make it feel like more dynamic. A lot of that depends on style, right? Like, what do you want to do? How are you going to, how are we going to sell it? Again, let's if we want to add a bit of shading here. Let's just do it with that same same motion. But yeah, anyway. Fun little drawing. Hopefully this one has been a little bit interesting. Probably if we didn't get as tied up with the with the shoes and stuff then might have had a bit more opportunity to work on the background but yeah just a little drawing demo talking about drawing you know from different angles how to think about action etc I feel like we could we could make these eyes a little bit more interesting but I will leave it there so yeah let me know if you got any comments suggestions down below whether we should, uh, you know, might have been better to pick one of these different ones. But that's basically the, the, the process, right? And the more that we refine this, the less kind of fiddling around we'd have to do here. Um, you know, and certainly there's a million different ways you could take it. We could, you know, make his face a little bit more sort of on model to those drawings, right? Add a little bit more softness to it. I've made mine quite, quite angular, right? a little bit older, but uh, yeah, that's why, again, you know, you doing your fan art is important. You, you get to make those decisions yourself, figure out what you want to do, um, which version of the character you want to, um, you know, draw, whether you want it to be sort of more adult, more cartoony, whatever, totally, totally up to you um but yeah anyway i think that's it for this one that's all we got time for we will uh, catch you around and happy drawing